Well, he's one of the country's most successful Olympians, winning gold in windsurfing and coaching others, including his sister Barbara, to win gold as well. Please welcome to the cafe, Bruce Kendall. Yes! Um, sailing, Bruce, is really in your family's blood, isn't it? Your dad was the, he was, uh, the chairman of the Auckland Yachting Association for a while too, wasn't he? Yes, well, um, I was pretty much brought up on the water, so um, the week before I was born, my mum was rowing the mullet boat back from <laughs> Motuhi back to Bucklands Beach because they ran out of water, <laughs> and she was sick of me, she wanted me out. <laughs> and then the first, week, uh, uh, first weekend after I was born, I was in the carry cot on the boat, so I've been brought up on the water. Yeah, that's the perfect time, isn't it, with kids on the boat, because a newborn, they can't go anywhere, and they're just exactly. doing what they're going to do anyway, so you might as well be on a boat. Exactly. So um, my sisters and I have done the same to our kids. Good. Yeah. And it's given you a fantastic life, hasn't it? I mean, you were in the top eight by the time you were a teenager, is that correct? Yes, yes. So how did, how, you know, how did that feel? Did you all of a sudden think, OK, this is something I could take worldwide? Well, to be honest, in the beginning, I... I really didn't think that I'd even get to go to the Olympic Games. Right. Because first of course you have to qualify the country so you have to finish in the top 10 in the world and prove to the selectors in New Zealand that you're capable of winning a medal. And um, being so far away from the rest of the world we'd never really competed against the rest of the world and the first time we went overseas we sort of finished in the 20s and Grant Beck and I recognised that we were a long way behind the rest of the world so we had to work together as a team to um, get to the top. So how do you go about doing that? I mean, what sort of training? And you must have an incredible drive. It must be mental strength that gets you there. Yeah, I, I guess it's a, a never give up attitude. Um, just keep on driving. Um, yeah. And was was New Zealand well resourced in terms of the support, or was uh, it no, not at all? <laughs> <laughs> so you're battling really about that. Yeah, so <laughs> you're battling battling with you know, I guess all those restrictions, weren't you? Yeah. Well, it, it's um, it was kind of interesting that um, when we Grant and I travelled overseas. We were literally, literally sleeping on beaches, um, slept in public um, toilets, slept in telephone booths under trucks. Um, it wasn't very good when it rained. Um, and we were competing against teams that had you know, full coaching support and, and uh, the whole bit. And so it was um, pretty cool to be able to yeah. you know, be the underdogs and come through and beat them. And you got to, uh, it was 84, wasn't it, that you won bronze? Yep, uh, 84 won bronze. Um, and. The interesting thing at that stage, I didn't have any money to travel in, in Europe and compete against the top competitors on a regular basis. So I didn't really know them that well. And when you're racing, it's really important to know um, the intricacies of you know, where they're weak and where they're strong, whether you can trust them, whether you can't, just like the America's Cup. Exactly, you know? are they gonna do something dodgy on the start line or not? Exactly. <laughs> and uh, so when I competed, I, I was pretty green and um, I was fast enough to win the gold medal, but I ended up having a collision with a French guy because, and, and technically I was in the right, but um, it was his word against mine and, and I lost. And so I ended up with a bronze instead of definitely a silver, could have been a gold. Ooh, okay, so you, 84, you get the bronze, um, obviously a bit more recognition. <laughs> Did things change over the next four years leading up to that gold in 88, or was it still a sort of one-man struggle or a two-man no, struggle? No, it changed completely. It wow. was absolutely awesome. Um, it allowed me to sail full-time because leading up to 84, I'd work for half the year. I was doing sheet metal labouring and pretty um, tough work. And then, of course, after 84, I could be involved in the industry full time and, and got sponsorship and developing and designing all kinds of equipment, competing in all aspects of the sport, not just uh, Olympic sailing. So competing wave sailing, speed sailing, um, in the professional circuit, earning money. And it was absolutely wow. awesome. So after 84, I didn't do that much Olympic class racing. I was right. doing everything else that I wanted to do. Fantastic. Amazing how you have to, you know, basically win a medal in the Olympics to get that support that you needed to yes. take you to the gold. Um, fascinating story. Yeah. Okay, what are you up to now? What are you doing now? Uh, right now, I'm, uh, I've got a young family and um, I'm coaching. And uh, I'm also um, doing all sorts of other things. Mm to try and earn a living outside of sport. So you were involved with the Netherlands team at the last Olympics? That's right. I was uh, coaching, started off coaching the, uh, the girl, uh, Lillian de Juice, who mm. ended up finishing fourth at the Olympic Games. Oh, Poor wow. thing, I know how oh, it feels. That would be the toughest, but that yes. would be really tough. That would be so much harder than bronze. At least you got a medal there. It is, it is. It's tough. 
Um, I finished fourth in Barcelona, so I know what it feels like. <laughs> you know exactly what it feels yeah, like. It's terrible. And uh, then after I um, got her up into the podium level, I started working with the, the Dutch catamaran team. Okay. And uh, like the America's Cup, it's a foiling catamaran, but it's only two people. Mm. And uh, again, I took them from sort of the teens um, to the podium, so they they um, they really within shooting distance of a medal at the Olympic Games. Foiling is the future, isn't it? I mean, it's like it's like so rocket ship stuff for people that have maybe done normal sailing or just watched it. But it's it's the way of the future, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's absolutely amazing. Mm. I mean, it. Um, You're watching the America's Cup, obviously. Yeah, it's ruining my life. I'm waking up every morning before <laughs> five o'clock to watch them and struggling yeah. to get enough sleep. But oh, uh, yeah. it's yeah. very exciting, it, without a doubt. It's the it's the most exciting racing for the America's Cup we've ever seen. And the Louis Vuitton series, it's the closest racing yeah. that we've ever seen. It's fantastic. Right, and I do believe too, you linked it with a little bit of honey, which is why we've got some honey on yes. the uh, on here on the cafe, but we're gonna hear more about that, I think, in upcoming shows. So, yeah. hey, uh, thank you so much. My that pleasure. was a fascinating story, learning about your history. Congratulations yeah. on everything you've achieved. Yeah, thank you. Uh, keep it going, and uh, hopefully you'll get to see more of the America's Cup. <laughs> it's, 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 it's family too. It's ruining his life, though. Yeah, it's ruining true. all of our lives, actually, because we might make it a little bit later. Well, thank you so much for coming in, Bruce. Thank you.